common regulation of blood glucose. David Seven Sons Theatre at gmail.com. You can contact us. Uh, hormonal regulation of blood glucose level. Yeah, glucose in blood. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to other students to also enjoy the videos you like. Don't forget to subscribe, please, for better and more videos. We want to talk about first the norm of blood glucose. What is the set point? What is the normal levels? When you're fasting, fasting blood glucose level in a post-absorptive state varies between 70 and 110 milligrams per deciliter. That is a point to note. Two. Postpone your blood glucose level when you just you just have a large carbohydrate meal or following or administration of glucose in the dose of one gram per kilogram of body. The blood glucose level increases to about 140 milligrams per deciliter, and this is less than uh, can be around there, but it should be less than 150 milligrams per deciliter in just a period of less than one hour. So this is a point to note. So when you find that this decrease, uh, like, uh, okay, we have post prandio after eating, the, uh, after eating, yeah, in just a period of one hour, you will see the level rising to about 140. Yeah. Okay. Normal blood glucose is reserved in the body in these sites. One, we can have free glucose, which is about 18 grams of free glucose in blood. You can have glucose stored in the form of glycogen in the liver and in the muscles. Yes, but that muscle glycogen cannot give us glucose to enter the blood because of a certain enzyme. Yeah, okay. Liver. <laughs> Muscle, glucose, phosphorylase, enzyme. Yeah, okay. So, the liver has about 100 grams of stored glycogen. An adult liver, which weighs about 1.5 kilograms, can provide only just 40 to, 5 to 50 grams of blood glucose from glycogen. 40 to 50. Also, glycogen store is much more than that of the liver. However, degradation of the glycogen in muscle doesn't directly produce glucose, but produces lactate, which is used for gluconeogenesis in the liver. You get? The muscle does not produce glucose directly, but it will produce lactate, which will go to the liver, and it will be converted back to glucose molecules. How do you prevent occurrence of hyperglycemia? Sometimes we have higher levels of glucose in blood. How do you prevent that occurrence? One, the occurrence of hyperglycemia after pure high carbohydrate load or a mixed meal in a healthy individual is prevented by a manifold four, time, four to five times increase in insulin secretion. That's how the body does it. It increases insulin, which has been secreted like five times more. It means this is done in response to, uh, to the carbohydrate you've eaten. Mm -hmm. These hormones reduce glucose production and increase glucose utilization. The insulin, it increases glucose utilization and reduces the production, production of cut through gluconeogenesis and many other forms, glycogenolysis and many other. So it prevents loss and enhances glucose utilization by the cells. So how do you prevent, how does the body prevent occurrence of hypoglycemia? Yes. Hypoglycemia, which may occur due to fasting or prolonged exercise, is prevented in a health individual by a number of hormones, which include glucagon, epinephrine, growth hormone, and glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids like cortisol. So these hormones they reduce re utilization and then they increase the production because we are having hypoglycemia. So 
maybe a point to note here. Hyperglycemia is hyperglycemia. <laughs> Hyperglycemia is reduced by only one hormone, insulin. But hypoglycemia is reduced by four hormones. You can see, hypoglycemia can be more deadly than hyperglycemia because the brain requires glucose. In such cases, you can you can find that you get hypoglycemic coma. Yeah, the brain there is a there's a coma which occurs when there's little, little glucose in blood. Yes? So another thing uh, is that these four hormones we said we have glucagon, epinephrine. Glucagon is by the alpha cells of pancreas. Epinephrine from the adrenomedulla growth hormone, which is released by the pituitary gland, the adrenal hypothesis. And uh, the glucocorticoids, which are released by the zona, zona reticular, zona fasciculata, yeah, zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex. Okay, so look at this. If you have dietary carbohydrates, let's say starch and cassava, sucrose in the, uh, if you just consider sugar cane. And glucose in many of the uh, many of the food we eat. So dietary carbohydrates they are digested and absorbed in the liver. We convert everything to glucose. So the, uh, the, we have majorly glucose in the liver, and uh, this glucose goes to blood. It is been in important saturation now. It enters systemic saturation. We can have these are body sources, sources of blood glucose. These are utilization mechanisms of blood glucose. So as we've said that some hormones will increase utilization and reduce production of glucose, while others will increase production of glucose and reduce utilization. So that's how the glucose levels are maintained at a norm of uh, 70 to 110, some say 90 milligrams per deciliter. So, glycogenolysis in the muscle gives us lactate. This lactate through gluconeogenesis generates the glucose. So are the amino acids, glycerin, propionate. These are also undergo gluconeogenesis in the liver, hepatocytes, and they are converted to glucose. Yeah, then we have glycogen glycogenolysis, yeah. This is breakdown of stored glycogen in the liver, also releases glucose. All this glucose produced will give us an increased blood glucose. So blood glucose, when you're fasting, we'll say 60 to 100 or 70 to 110. After eating, 100 to 140, around there. So these are just norms. So we need the hormones to regulate. And this, whole, this glucose can be excreted in urine, yes? Excreted in urine. We usually excrete greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Yeah, if it is excess. That is, uh, mm, that is it. So how is glucose utilized in the body? One, we have glycolysis and TCA cycle which convert glucose to ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. Yes? So, the, that is glycolysis. Now, that is glycolysis. We have, can you have glycogenesis. We form glu glycogen in the liver and the kidney. That is utilization of glucose in blood. You can use it to synthesize other monosaccharides and amino sugars. We can use it in the exo, exos monophosphate pump, huh? shunt, for pentose and NAD pH. This is the pentose phosphate pathway. You get pentose phosphate pathway, where I form pentose and NAD pH. We can use the glucose to synthesize fat. This fat form will be stored in the body. So that's how utilization occurs. 
So basically, it is five are for utilization, and these are makers of production of glucose. Let's continue. So just assume uh, the clinical correlations of uh, blood glucose. We have what you call the Bell's mellitus. So in the Bell's mellitus, uh, this is a clinical syndrome of hyperglycemia occurring due to relative or absolute deficiency of insulin. It is relative or absolute. In relative, we are producing insulin, but it's, it's not adequate enough to, to sustain activities of insulin on hyperglycemia. So, absolute, it means we don't have any production. In that case, we have destruction or autoimmune disease against the bitter cells of violet of lung hands, or violet of lung hands. So when those cells are degraded or destroyed, no production of insulin, and that is makes it absolutely deficient. Let's continue. One, primary diabetes, or what you can call insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, or type one. We also have nani independent diabetes type <laughs> diabetes mellitus. This is type 2. Both of these are primary diabetes. This is primary. The major causes are rotating about insulin and the what. So we can have secondary diabetes mellitus, which is associated with the diseases such as pancreatitis or cystic fibrosis, acromegaly, Cushing syndrome, and very many others. So anything associated to disease. It can be secondary, not primary. Okay. Uh, primary is about the glands and uh, yeah, insufficiency in production or deficiency of the cells to release. So let's talk about hypoglycemia. A clinical condition caused by blood glucose levels which have decreased to less than forty-five milligrams per deciliter. Or we can call it 2.5 millimol per liter. That is hypoglycemia. These values you should take note of them. Hypoglycemia in our diabetes, and we also have hypoglycemia in diabetics. So the diabetics, this one is more common. People with diabetes, but they have hypoglycemia. That is uh, lack in the midst of plenty, yeah. So glucose tolerance test, I can't leave this site without speaking about this. The glucose tolerance test, in a normal person, here we, we, we shall see how it is carried out. But look at this, in a normal person, fasting plasma glucose levels are between 70 and 110 milligrams per deciliter after glucose intake. So the peak value of about 140 is reached in an hour. Also, which returns to fasting level within two to two and a half hours. Urine does not show the presence of glucose. That is a normal person. But we can have people with diabetes mellitus where the glucose tolerance curve is abnormal. Fasting glucose level is high. That is 126. Yet it here should bear the maximum 110. Now the fasting is 126. Even after taking the glucose, the peak is also high, about 200 milligrams. This was about 140. It does not return to fasting level for a long time. That is 46 hours. Here it should return to in just two or two and a half hours. So what will happen? Uh, this this slow fall of, of blood glucose level indicates failure to control failure to control the glucose due to lack of insulin secretion following sugar ingestion. Yeah, that is how we know that the, this guy has diabetes mellitus. The, there is a delay to fall. If insulin is present, just two hours are enough. But because it is slowly produced, they have four to six hours before the curve comes back to normal. So look at this curve. In a normal person, it is like this, increase, decrease slightly. Impaired glucose tolerance, it is here. A guy of diabetes, it is too high. Yes, as you see, the plasma glucose is too high in the red, in the red, uh, red uh, curve. 
So impaired glucose tolerance. The fasting plasma levels between 110 and 126 milligrams per deciliter and the peak values after glucose concentration between 140 and 200 are classified as impaired glucose tolerance. Such are classified as impaired glucose tolerance. That is between 110. So if a person has a value during fasting, the value is between 110 and 126. Yes, and during uh, after glucose injection, the value peaks to around between 140 and uh, 200. Yeah, between 140 and 200, somewhere there. It means this person is a potential candidate to develop diabetes later. Just so, so it is better you start uh, taking uh, care, taking a. Uh, relevant measures so that we can reduce the, the, the occurrence of diabetes. So you can find more about diabetes and uh, hypoglycemia in the next video. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe, you like, you share, yeah, share, share to other students to also enjoy. To subscribe for more and better videos, yeah. Thank you, thank you.